Once the dongle is in place, you need to go to HDMI on the remote control. And you might get a no signal. There's probably more than one HDMI connection. So if you see no signal, then press HDMI again. And you'll see the HDMI slash HML or MHL. And that was, was, was on the dongle. And now you'll see this. And you'll also get at the top here the SSID and the password. Using your iPad with the ViewSonic wireless dongle. You'll need the application. Go to your app store. Search for vPresenter Pro. Select the one on the left by Chi Yang Chen. Before you open it, though, we need to connect to the wireless dongle. I'm going to go back to my main page. And I'll select Settings, Wi-Fi. And under choose a network, I'll find the SSID of the dongle. And the way to find the SSID is to turn on the projector, press the HDMI button twice on the projector's remote, and from the screen you'll see the SSID and the password that you'll need. If there are other wireless dongles active nearby, you might see more than one, so make sure you select the right SSID. And when it asks for password, enter the password from the screen and tap join. Note the blue check mark means we're connected to the dongle. Before we start using the vPresenter Pro software, we might want to set up some permissions. So back in settings on our iPad, we will find the vPresenter Pro program. And if we want to show videos or our camera, we need to turn on access. So in photos, I'm going to slide the indicator to the right till it turns green. And I'll do the same with camera and media library. And note we already have our preferred device listed. I'm also going to go into privacy and under photos I'll make sure that vPresenter Pro is selected and it is. And additionally I'm going to give it access to my Dropbox and we can always come back to settings if there's anything else we need to give permissions. So let's go back to our main menu. I press my menu button and I'm going to go ahead and select the software vPresenter Pro and normally if you're working online in the classroom you would select the first option but I'm going to be working offline just as demo so I'm going to select the second button and I'm going to ignore the warning and here are the things that I could do while I'm connected to the wireless dongle with my iPad note we won't be able to mirror the iPad screen but we can show documents videos and pictures let's start with the photo icon and whatever photos we show on our iPad will be duplicated to our projector screen. So this just pulls up a list of photos on the iPad and we can tap which photo we want to display. And to go back to the main menu we tap vPresenter Pro at the top left. If it disappears when you're in full screen mode you can still tap at the top left and you'll see vPresenter Pro come back and then you just tap it to go back to the main menu. The camera feature is very handy because whatever shows through your iPad camera will be projected to the screen. So you could basically turn your iPad into a document camera. For instance, let's say you want to project an image from a book or you're demonstrating some type of gadget and you want to project that to the screen. You simply tap the camera icon and then you point your iPad to the book or to the paper or to the object that you're demonstrating. And once again, when done, tap vPresenter Pro at the top left to go back to the main menu. When you're moving back and forth between programs, you might not see the main menu come back up on your projector. You might see the last image frozen until you choose another option. Let's take a look at cloud storage. You have to set this up beforehand. And you saw earlier I did set it up to work with Dropbox. You would have to have some type of cloud storage app on your iPad in order for this to work something like the Apple Cloud Storage or Microsoft's OneDrive and I have Dropbox. So I'll tap Cloud Storage and then I'll tap pick a file and because I had already set up Dropbox it's asking for me to pick files from my Dropbox and this last one here is a PowerPoint presentation that I uploaded to Dropbox so I'll tap that and even though you really can't display your iPad specifically you can display documents through this Cloud Storage. So this is a PowerPoint presentation and if I want to move between slides I click the arrows at the top right 
I'll tap the down arrow to move to the next slide and I will tap the up arrow to move to the previous slides. We can also annotate on the slides. At the very top right you see a pencil and when you tap that you get a menu at the bottom where you could choose the size of your drawing, the color of your drawing, and there's also an eraser. If I wanted to annotate in blue, I would select the blue icon at the bottom. And then using my finger or a stylus, I can annotate on the slide. And if I want to erase any annotations, I can tap the eraser. And then once again, using my finger or a stylus, I can erase what I just annotated. When you're done annotating, tap Done. And when you want to go back to your cloud storage menu, you can tap cloud storage on the top left. Then you can go back to the V Presenter Pro menu at the top left again. If for any reason you can't get back to the main menu from cloud storage or from any other item in V Presenter Pro, you can double tap the menu button on your iPad. This shows all the open programs. Then you can swipe up to close the program completely. So I'll swipe up to close cloud storage and I'll swipe up to close settings. Then I'm back to the main menu. Then I can just tap V Presenter Pro once again to get back into the program. The document feature works a lot like the cloud storage feature in that it allows us to display documents to the iPad which will be duplicated to the projected screen. The document feature also requires some prior setup before it will work. Connect your iPad to your computer using your lightning or 30 pin connector. On your computer go to iTunes. Ensure that your iPad is listed under devices on the left hand side, the left hand side menu. At the top click the iPad icon. On the left side menu click apps. And it will take a while for the apps to load. And when the page is fully loaded, scroll down to the bottom of the page under File Sharing. At the Presenter Pro app, you will see listed some documents that are already synced. To sync other documents, tap Add. Browse to find documents you want to add to your iPad. Once you find a document, click Add again. Then select the documents that you want to send to your iPad. You can hold down the Command key on a Mac to select more than one on an on a PC, you can hold down the control key. And then at the bottom, click Sync. And this process will take a few moments. You can see the steps moving at the top of the page. And when syncing has stopped, you can tap Done at the bottom right. And when ready, go back to your vPresenter Pro program on your iPad. Select Document. And you should be able to see the documents that you sync. And notice that the documents show up in group order. It puts all the PDF documents in one place, all the Word documents in another place, etc. And when you want to present a document, you can tap on it. I'm going to tap the first one, a PDF document. And once again, this looks just like the Cloud Storage app. You can click the down arrow to move between pages. And you can select the pen to make annotations. And select Done when done. And select Streaming Doc to get back to the main menu or to get back to the streaming menu and then the Presenter Pro to get back to the main menu. AirView, the last icon here, is a handy feature. It won't work because I'm working in offline mode right now, but if you were working online and you were connected to a projector wirelessly, and let's say that you're in the back of the room and you're having trouble seeing the projector, AirView will duplicate what's on the projector so you could see what's going on close up on your iPad. So basically it duplicates the projector to your screen. So someone else could be projecting a completely different computer and you will see that on your iPad. The web option allows you to display the internet to your projector.